Hello there, this is Ayman al Ghazali with the SQLPro.com and I'm here to welcome you back to another SQL Snack. Today we're going to continue our series on table partitioning with SQL Server and uh, specifically today we're going to discuss two things real quickly here. We're going to discuss briefly the locking architecture associated with partitioning and how it can be an advantage over a non-partition table and how there is somewhat of a disaster recovery um, I guess benefit to having some partitioned uh, tables. So without further ado I'm going to start by creating a new database. Um, this is going to be similar to the one I've done in or not <coughs> excuse me to the database that I've used in the previous SQL snacks with the exception of um, the fact that I'm moving one of my file groups with the file to the X drive. I'll show you real quickly how my server set up. Have Z drive has data, Y has log, and X has backups. So I've decided to put one of the files on X, which is the archive file group. And one of the advantages of partitioning is if you separate the files on different disks, you could potentially have faster um, I/O speeds, which which is you know a great benefit of using table partitioning. So uh, it's pretty much very similar code to um, you know the other SQL snacks that I've done on partitioning. I'm going to insert same data, very simple. I uh, partitioned by year, uh, 2013, 2014. And I'm going to create a second table, which is identical to the first table, but it is not on the partition. And I would advise you to review um, the partitioning 101 and 102 videos uh, before attempting this one. So I've created my two tables. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open a transaction, very simple, for my orders table, which is partitioned. I'm going to <coughs> update my orders where the year uh, order date is less than 2014 and for my non-partition table I'm going to do the exact same thing and I'm not going to commit the transaction and you have to do this in separate query windows to, to actually be able to work this demo. I'm going to execute uh, this transaction still open because it's an explicit transaction I've not committed or done a rollback and now I'm going to go to my other query window here I'm going to start to run um, these three queries. So basically it's, it's pretty simple. The first query brings orders where the order date is greater than or equal to uh, January 1st of 2014. The second query will bring it back. Um, our orders that are you know less than <coughs> uh, excuse me January 1st of 2014 and then our last table here uh, is going to bring back orders where the order date is greater than or equal to 2014. Um, um, January 1st, 2014. So as you can see, the only data that actually came back, let me stop this real quick, um, only the first select came back because these rows are being locked on our orders table. They are on a partition that's locked and as you know, 2014 data is on a different partition than this data and it's not being logged so we can easily do select queries against it. And our orders to table has no partition on it. right? So, um, even without the WHERE clause, this query is not going to run because the table is being locked for an update statement. Now, let me just stop this right here. I'm going to select all three <coughs> and execute. And again, you can see the, only the first query came back. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to commit my transaction. And now I can see the actual data since the locks have been released. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the second thing I wanted to do is I'm going to drop my X drive. Um, this is a virtual machine, so I'm going to physically remove it from my VM right now. And as you remember, my X drive had my um, FG archive file group. Okay, so it no longer exists. Um, let me just show you real quickly here. The file called FG Archive um, that 
has some data, has data that's prior to 2013. And as you can see, we've inserted data from 2012. And if I come and do a select statement here on my orders table, I'm going to get all the, all the data back. Right, even the, the data that I updated. And that's because this data is in the buffer. It's in memory right now. So um, that's pretty neat. I can start inserting data. Uh, no problems. My transaction log is going to take the inserts. It won't be able to run a checkpoint on data that's stored in the FG archive because the drive is gone. Right? I showed you here. X drive is gone. And let's say that I dropped my buffers. So I just cleared all my RAM. Of course, don't try any of this in production, please. Now, if I run uh, my select statement on the orders table, well, first I have to get the right database, right? I run it on the orders table. I'm going to get the date back, which is interesting. Okay, sorry about that confusion. I forgot um, I, I needed to do something um, before running any of that stuff. So anyways, I put my X drive back and what I'm going to do is I have to run a checkpoint first. Make sure that everything um, that's in memory that has not been flushed to disk has been flushed to disk. Remember I did some update statements uh, just a minute ago. So I'm going to do a select star from orders. So everything's in memory right now. I'm going to remove my drive again, get rid of drive X, checkpoints already been done as you can see, no drive X, checkpoints been done so there are no um, dirty pages in memory. I'm going to drop the clean buffers right? and now when I run this select statement I'm going to get my data back. right? But when I run this select statement I'm going to have an issue and I just look at the error message here see it's saying that you now the device is not ready because I have DriveX is unavailable on my server and I have some data stored in DriveX because one of my file groups with the file um, for FG archive is on X drive I can no longer access it so before I dropped the clean buffers I was okay because I was reading from memory but you know let's say you, you restart your server or, or the pages get flushed out because of you know, take after a certain amount of time pages get released from memory if, if there's memory pressure. So let's say that happens and those pages get out of memory then you would have to go to disk to get it. What's interesting is if you insert data it'll just be in your log and once you recover that, that missing file um, you know there's, there's ways to recover that data that could have been lost because a log file um, is going to record all of the inserts even if the data file is offline. So one of the cool things about using uh, partitioning is if you have a drive that fails, you can still read data from other drives, which is neat. Um, the device is not ready. Perfect. Oh, that's right. I'm trying to go from the whole table. So just grabbing the, um, the data that's in other partitions. Um, you know, 2014 is on a separate drive. It's on the Z drive, so I can actually grab that data. And obviously I can grab whatever I want from orders 2 because orders 2 is not partitioned. It's on um, one file group on one drive. So um, it's kind of neat. So if we were to lose the file group, for example, for orders 2, then the entire table would be inaccessible. But since orders is partitioned, we can actually access the data from files that are on drives that are still online. And here are the other drives. I'm going to quickly return um, drive X back and bring things back up. There it is, Drive X. Use my master database. I'm going to do something a little bit ugly. Put my database offline and online. It's not the best way to do it, but you know, um, for lack of time, that's what I have. <laughs> um, so now I can do selects all my orders database. Um, drive X is back. Everything's back to normal. So in the case of a disaster, for example, partitioning could actually be very useful for disaster recovery. And in general, uh, file groups and multiple files are pretty helpful for uh, database recovery. Thank you for attending, and you know I hope you learned something valuable about table partitioning.